In the introductory video, we saw our target application. Now we will see the main features of smart device applications. All of the smart device apps we develop will necessarily have part of them executed on a web server. This is true not only for line of business applications, that is to say, applications for smart devices, which are only part of corporate applications, but also for the case of consumer applications, which are meant to be uploaded to the various markets and then downloaded by users either in paid or free mode. In this case, we'll focus on the individual. Halfway between the two mentioned are the company to consumer applications, which are developed by a company for its customers and with the purpose of expanding its user base. Our event day application could be seen as a hybrid because part of it is focused on those attending the event, the front end, and another part is used by the event's organizers to modify data from the database with a mobile method, the back end. In fact, in addition to publishing sessions, speakers, and other data through a web system, we also want to provide those functionalities and more through a mobile application. And just like we need a backend web system for authorized users to manage the system's data, we could also need all or part of the data management be done by authorized users on the smart device application. This will allow editing data in the centralized database from the event site just one minute before a session starts. There will be almost no functional differences between the back-end implementation and the front-end implementation. The difference will be that authorized users, those we have security for, will be allowed CRUD functions, create, update, delete, on some data through screens not available for unauthorized users. Just like the web part was developed in Genexus and later was implemented by Genexus in one of the languages available, Ruby, Java, or .NET, meaning that Genexus is multi-platform, the mobile part will be developed in the same way, following the Genexus logic. That is to say, Genexus will implement it in the programming language of the selected platform and according to that platform's interface and behavior standards. The most popular platforms are supported, iOS, Android, BlackBerry, and Windows 8. So Genexus continues to be multi-platform also in relation to applications for smart devices. To make our prototyping task easier, Genexus enables us to develop the web part in a cloud. Therefore, to the extent that we have internet access, we will be able to test the application from anywhere, and all the software, programs, and database will be hosted there with no need to be concerned about infrastructure. This is done through the web generator's deploy to cloud property. One scenario that's quite important for smart devices, and mainly for certain kinds of applications, is to allow for applications or part of them to continue to be executed when they're not connected to the internet. Think, for example, of when we work in rural areas or when a salesperson has to create purchase orders on the go from different locations. For the case of our application, we want the user to be able to view the entire conference schedule and all the related information, even when the network connection becomes unavailable. Upon recovering the connection, the application will update data automatically, which is in a local base on the device and synchronized with the server, while receiving the information from the server and sending information as well, like when the user marks certain sessions as favorites while disconnected. And we will want that information to be sent to the server once the connection has been re-established. However, there will be tasks that will necessarily require access to the web server due to their sensitivity and need to be validated in the centralized database. Or due to fast changing data. All such tasks must be executed online. In our case, the login must be done with a connection. And the same is desirable for the panel displaying the tweets. So, we will be able to choose which objects of the application may be executed offline and which not. 
the user will require that all applications for his device have a similar look and feel to that of his native applications. For example, his contacts application, calendar, the way of going back in the device itself, that is to say, following the guidelines of his platform. The user will also require integration with the other functionalities of the software device, such as the calendar or contact list, and also in relation to hardware, like the photo camera, phone calls, or GPS. Here's an example. In an iPhone 7, the native contacts application and a view of the application developed with Genexus Event Day. Regardless of definitions relative to design, color, and others, we can see that there is a particular appearance pattern in common, an upper bar with certain actions. And then a menu in tab form to change display options. However, when we change from one device to another, even when the application is basically the same, showing a list of sessions in this case, there are subtle but significant differences, both aesthetically and functionally. For instance, in the case of iOS, the menu is always visible because that's what its guidelines indicate, while in Android it is not. To return to the menu, we tap on the application's icon, or if the screen displayed was invoked directly from the menu, with the back button of the device. Here we can see how, once positioned on a session, the iPhone application enables us, by means of a special icon, to view the actions we may perform in that session, such as scheduling it on the device's calendar, which in turn will open its native program or share it as well. On the other hand, on the Android phone we are allowed to access actions through a special button on the device. And, just as it happened when we selected the schedule action, it will open the calendar of the Android device. We can also see how iOS includes an icon in the top right corner of the upper bar to return to the caller. In Android, we have the device's own back button. In sum, smart device applications must be native. The next video will introduce us to these applications' conceptual model. We will see the four screen types required to develop a smart device application and the objects that implement them, as well as the relations between them. You're invited to join us for that video as well.